And hello, everyone. Good to see you here. Paul's diving into your summer reading program. I even busted out this uh, dad sweater for whatever reason. I don't know why. It's getting nerdier and nerdier. But I think if anybody calls you a nerd, take it as a compliment, because really, you are the smart one. So we're getting smarter day by day. Uh, as part of this daily creative challenge where we're focusing on some nice books, retranslating them, and uh, learning some Photoshop tips like we've done with Dorian Gray, uh, Jane Eyre, Frankenstein, all these fun ones. And we're gonna come down here to this one, as you can see. Uh, it's called Love in the Time of Cholera by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. All right, which sounds kind of scary. Love in the time of cholera. It's kind of like what we're dealing with now. It's like love in the time of COVID. <laughs> I feel sorry for every single person out there. It can't be easy. All right, but that's what we're going to work on. And I just want to welcome you. So uh, welcome Monica, Afroja, Mayan, uh, Michelle. Awesome. Good to have you here. Those elsewhere. Good morning. Um, Paulo, I see you there. Awesome. Cool. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, you can see right over here in the challenge tab, uh, go to this URL. I'll just post it right in here really fast as well to chat. And uh, it's creating a floral portrait. So we're gonna learn layers, layer comps, and a lot of selections. Because what we need to do is we need to select these objects before turning them into a layer mask or a clipping mask. And even both. So we're really gonna get it stacked. It's gonna be awesome. Pam, what's up? Uh, get your started file right there. Click like so. We could see it right here. Go ahead and download it. Uh, a romantic bath in a vat of hand sanitizer. That's got to that's that's probably got to sting some parts. I don't know. Maybe this is me. But here we are. Here's our file. Okay. Uh, a little bit about this novel, just like real, uh, real quickly. It is just basically uh, written uh, very sort of poetically and flowerly, flower, flowery, if you will, uh, about the love between these two people. Um, father didn't want the daughter to marry this guy, so they moved away. She ends up marrying someone else. Uh, and then he just kind of stays in love with her, even though they're in like uh, a distance away. And, uh, and he was not the best guy anyways, but eventually her husband dies and they marry sort of later on in life. That's, I'm not to ruin the ending, but that's the short of the book. The thing is, this is very flowery, which is why we have all these lovely flowers right in here. These were all taken, I think from Smithsonian, by the way. So these are just uh, free images from Smithsonian that I, I uh, kind of dropped in there, okay, that we will go ahead and use. And we're going to marry these images with uh, this woman back here, okay? So we do this a couple different ways. Uh, welcome, Chad. Welcome, everybody. Good to have you here. Uh, for this woman, this is, again, I absolutely love this. If you take one thing away, it's this. I usually use a, go to a selection tool. It's the fourth one down, doesn't matter what's here. But if you go up to the top, we wanna to just do a quick select subject just to cut her out. So we're on the woman layer, select subject. No, no hands mode, right? Making it a layer mask right down here. We have this layer selected and then we can click right there. Boom, what happens? It makes this lovely mask and cuts out all of her hair, as we can see. It's glorious, is what I'd like to say. Robzilla in the house, good to see you, Rob. Awesome. So, uh, this is what it generated, we can see right here. And uh, I picked this image for a reason, because there's gonna have problems with any image. Not that there are problems, you know, it's just like, it gets you 95% of the way there. Percentages vary based on the image. We know for dealing with layer masks, and actually I might even make this panel larger so everybody can see these lovely layers off to the side right here. I'm gonna select this layer, make sure it is selected, right? Bah, bah, right? We have that selected. Now when we paint with white, so I'll just go to my brush. We paint with white we're gonna bring back part of that photo. So that's what I would do in this case. I would change my brush to a hard round and then just paint in that spot right there to bring back her neck like so. So that's the basics of layer masks. We can also see right over here on her nose, right? Not only do we use a brush, yeah, we can use a brush to do this, 
right, and slowly bring it back like so. Or we can use our selection tools. So you can use your uh, lasso tool to come in and select to get those hard edges and then just fill that in with white, right? So just two different ways to um, add black and or white. Uh, <laughs> you really like those gradients. That is correct, I like these gradients. It's just pretty, what can I say? It's pretty, and I know I'm just getting hot. 95% uh, is right, Colleen. By the way, so here's another pro way of doing that because if you do Command J, let's delete this. I'm gonna do even one better. It got us 95% the way. Selecting this layer, right? We just wanna remove the background. Go to the properties panel right over here. Remove background, bam. Oh, it did two steps in one, right? So we're getting things done even faster. Again, same process. We could jump in and paint this back in. You get the idea. All right, so let's move on. We have her. We have the lovely gradients in the background. Feel free to switch that up. We have all these crazy layers that we're going to have to chop up as well, right? Good morning, A Villa. Is that your name? All right. It is getting hot in here, let me tell you. Uh, with this image selected, so here we go. I, I picked images that are like probably the hardest to, um, to cut out. This is not gonna be easy, but I'm gonna show you sort of the easiest way for doing this. Uh, to answer your question, Marsha, I do use the pen tool anytime I want smooth curves, I'll use uh, the pen tool. So that's a good call, but typically I've just, I use the lasso tool a lot. First off, my goal is to cut out these images, right? And get rid of this grainy background. Look at this is like, oh, it's gonna be such a pain, right? We could try that. We could try our select subject. Oh, it kind of did it. In fact, let's go to remove background just to see what happens. Ah, oh, I'm so jealous of this. Look at this. It did a pretty good job, right? It doesn't get all of it. Okay, so I'll just undo that. Let's turn off that. This is typically what I would do is I would go in and use, I could use the magic wand tool, right? Using the magic wand tool, we have the tolerance set to the defaults, right? If I click in here, it'll get a lot of things, but it misses a lot of these little dots, right? So there are options right up here at the top, right? We have the tolerance set to 32. It's set to anti-alias, which is why it's picking up a lot of that stuff. If that was turned off, look at how ugly. No, no, no. I, I like get all the stuff. So turn on anti-alias. It's going to uh, sort of grab more of the pixels that we need, but we could also change the sample size to like a five by five average or 11 by 11 average. So think of it about uh, uh, a circle about 11 by 11. When we click in here, it's going to grab everything. And because I have contiguous turned off, if it's turned on, by the way, when I click, it's not going to get the inside parts right in here because contiguous means one uh, one selection, one continuous selection. So turn that off, click right in there, right? And it will select most of it, okay? Or we could try channels. Sig, I don't use channels that much when it comes to selections. Uh, I could, we do have greens and we have blues in here, so I could try that as well. But uh, again, if I go in here and I add that uh, selection like that, uh, there's a lot of missing pieces. So from there, I'll usually jump in and use the quick selection tool, right? So remember, I selected the background. I'm like, oh, get rid of this. So hold down the option key. And what that's doing is it's saying, hey, you know what? Subtract that part and the various parts that I want to subtract. So anyways, um, I'm not gonna get too carried away here and I'm gonna try to do this fast by the way, because there's lots of things to cut out, but I'm gonna do it all uh, this way, uh, is the short of it, because I'm gonna get into uh, creating the masks, right? And it doesn't have to be perfect, because I'm gonna blend this with her hair. The cool thing is I can always go back in and change it if I want to, but let's grab most of those leaves like that, right? With that done, uh, yes, thank you, Sam Peterson, you're so helpful. Right down here, what happens if we just click layer mask? Boop. Oh, it just keeps the background. No, I didn't want that. 
I want the opposite of that. So what do we do? Right down here, we'll hold down the Alt key, or Alt key if you're on a PC, Option key if you're on a Mac, and add that layer mask. And it's gonna add an invert of it. Oh, there we go. It added that invert like so. We we'll zoom out, we can see it right there. And uh, you know, we can go in and clean it up and all that fun stuff. All right. Uh... Uh, yeah, I don't know what to, if you're having a problem. So by the way, when it comes to the tools, I see your question in there, and that's why I love doing this live, because I can kind of answer your questions right away. Be mindful if you have a lasso tool selected, uh, just be mindful of all your settings up at the top. If you're having an issue with any tool, you could always right click and reset tool and reset it back to the way it was. So that might help you, right? Okay, so let's just do this. Let's just, let's just get this party started. This is another thing I would do. I would actually go in and I would do levels and I would go ahead and make that white even brighter back there. Like that, make that true white. Use my white magic wand tool, clicking once. Quick selection tool in case I want to pick up any, any of that stuff inside of these areas. Kind of like that. There we are. Let's move on with the rest of our lives. And the hardest image that we have going for us is this one. So again, just bringing up that contrast, right? Trimming up. This is this is our life. This is this is pretty much my life as a designer. Going in here and trying to get this dialed in just right. Okay. So again, I'm gonna do this pretty fast. There we are. Switch. Ba ba. Come on, why is it quick? There we go. Let's grab some of this really fast. This is pro level selecting, right? This is kind of the not fun selecting, but you know what? Anything uh, worth doing is not necessarily gonna be that easy. Otherwise everybody would, do it, would be doing it, right? So let's grab some of this. Let's get rid of that. Let's click right, oh. There we go, that works. Again, down here, hold down the option key and you will go ahead and knock that out. And we have a chunk of what we need. All right. All right, cool. We got that. I'm gonna do this just a uh, couple more times, really fast, just so we have our shapes. Again, spending some time on this, because it's worth it. Right, maybe I actually just want this chunk. I just really want this. Here I am with my lasso tool. I've gotten so good at the lasso tool, just using the lasso tool and um, uh, my mouse. That's typically what I end up using. So, um, by the way, channels was mentioned. We could go in and if you hold down the command key, so you can see the RGB, the red, green, and blue channels. Let's turn off that background first. Right in here, we can go to channels. Like what was mentioned, there's a lot of green in there. I can hold down the command key to deselect that and then click and it will select everything that's green. Okay, so that is how you can go ahead and use channels. Okay, we'll switch back to the color version and let's see what happens with this one using channels right down here. Click, there we are. We can see what that look like, looks like with the background. This is with the green channel, green channel. Ah, pro level. That did a pretty good job. Got rid of a lot of the white, but that's okay. Cool. Uh, so when I go to put the mask on it, it just makes it white. Hunter, I do not know. When you go to put a mask on it, it just makes it white. Probably what's happening, by the way, let's get rid of this one, is um, when you're selecting the background, right, and then you turn it into a mask, right? I'm selecting the background. When I go down here to turn it into a mask, if I just click, it's gonna get rid of uh, everything that's not selected. So you need to do an invert of that, right? Which is why I hold down the option key. But you could always go to this mask, do a select all, command A. So I'm, I have the mask selected and then command I to invert it. So again, we've just inverted this mask. So maybe that's what you're talking about. I'm not sure, but hopefully that helps. Let's go in and get this party started. 
really fast. I gotta get I gotta get something cool going quickly. Guess what? I'm just gonna apply a layer mask right there. I'm gonna chop out maybe this flower right here. This one. This is my life. Let's get into some fun masks. There we are. We have all these lovely flowers that we can work with that we're gonna add as part of our uh, layout. Last one we're gonna do is this. Zoop, bring that in like that. There we are. Select. Boom. There we are. We have everything cut out. Ah, oh, I tell you what, you know, selecting is the hard part. Now we get into the fun of it all, which is just starting to create our fun composite. Because again, what do we have in here? We have all this fun stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to apply layer mask there. I'm going to have, uh, oftentimes, I will start converting all of these to, um, to uh, smart objects, right? So I'll come over here for this one. Remember, we made this with a green channel. We can go ahead and convert this to a smart object. Bam! Just right click, smart object, right? Right in here. Same thing for this one. Convert to smart object. For you pros out there, you're probably going to create a shortcut, by the way. That's what I would do. So my shortcut is command option control S. It's like all the keys and then S for smart object. That's what I do. That's what makes my everything go pretty fast. I can take all these, I can put them in a group, command G. These are all our flowers that we're gonna put in her hair now. So this is gonna get fun. The reason I made these smart objects, right, and I would do that with all of these, is because I wanna be able to manipulate them, uh, size them up and down without losing any quality. So that's what I would do right in here. Let's get rid of that guy. Right now we can have like some fun right so you can size these up and down and do all sorts of fun things all right are you ready uh why would you not use the select a mask from the menu i could totally do that which is a great idea um i'm just not going to worry about it because I, I don't really i'm not i don't know i'm not going to i just don't need i just don't need it i didn't want to get to that level of detail uh but i could so yeah you can really kind of refine it definitely with select a mask so thanks for bringing that up Check this out, are you ready for this? Let's see, what shall we do? I have all this content. I have her. I wanna to start to adjust things, move them over. Let's scale some things down. Like I said, I was gonna put it all in her hair, right? So command click will select your layer. Command T, shrink it down, move it up. Let's do a just a nice like double exposure with this, shall we? Let's try this. Let's take this layer of this woman. We're gonna duplicate it. We're gonna put it on top. So here she is on top. Are you ready for this? So now I want to talk about clipping masks. We made, made layer masks, but now I just want this woman to appear everywhere the flowers are, okay? So have her only appear where the flowers are. So what do we do? We right click, create clipping mask, boom. Now she's inside of those flowers. And as I move these flowers around, we could see that we're revealing more of her, which is really cool, right? So hopefully you guys like this style. I think it's kind of fun, right? Going in here, kind of moving that over. You get the idea, okay? We could play with this some more. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna change this blend mode just to inspire you. Change this to say something like, I don't know, overlay or some soft light or something, maybe even lighten. Right, so we could see how it's kind of interacting with those fun flowers. So I can change that to lighten. I can turn on maybe the background one, right? And there we have her, right? Kind of interacting with those flowers, if you will. Here are the flowers, which we can move around. And then here we have just like her in the background kind of showing through. Right. 
cool. Uh, you got it. So moving this over, kind of place that into place. It's looking, it's looking okay. All right, I kind of see it. Um, let's take things to the next level, okay? Because we've made layer masks. We understand how those work, right? Before these flowers, they're all in this folder, right? What if I wanted to get rid of some of the flowers in the front? Well, you can add a layer mask to a layer group. So here's a layer mask right down here. Sorry about that. Darn thing keeps popping up. But right here, we can add a layer mask to a layer group. That's what we just did. We added this to the layer group. Now I can paint, Command just hit B for brush, and I can paint with black, and that's gonna eliminate those flowers from the front. So I'll just do a soft round to kind of reveal her face right there, okay? It's because I added this layer mask. So hopefully that makes sense, right? Again, we could still turn this one on. We have these level, lovely flowers kind of wrapping or kind of like in her hair. Let's take a couple of these and actually bring them out as well. I think it'd be kind of fun. Command J to duplicate a layer. We could have some of these kind of come down like so, okay? Since this is a smart object, okay? Since this is a smart object, I can manipulate it all I want and it's not gonna break anything, which is cool, right? Let's do this, edit. Uh, we can do this a couple different ways. We can go into transform and we can go into warp, okay? Cause I wanna warp this branch. Warping it, there we are. We get these uh, Bezier points where we can grab and manipulate so to make sure it's like kind of following kind of going with the flow of her back like that okay so now i'm just kind of bending that into place so it kind of wraps around like so okay so that's one thing i could do there did it do it or did i accidentally hit escape i might have accidentally hit escape <laughs> uh no no it's there okay it is manipulating it i was just making sure right i want to split it some more i can split it say uh, vertically and then grab this middle point and pull the whole thing over and hopefully you can see that I'm kind of pulling all of this over like that okay so again that's actually brand new in Photoshop being able to add those extra fun lines uh, looks like I only have about four minutes left I'm gonna add a couple more and I'll show you my final that I ended up with right I can kind of move that down guess what you have all of this text right in here so let's turn this on kind of shrink down everything though too, right? Let's just kind of shrink it down. There she is. Taking this title right here and we could do the same thing and this gets to be so much fun. Let's grab uh, this, let's grab these butterflies because the butter butterflies are really colorful. Okay, so since I'm talking about layer masks and clipping masks, I have these wonderful butterflies and for these butterflies, I want to put these butterflies inside of the text, right? So I don't want to cover it up too much, but I can take these right over here, right click, create clipping mask, boom. There they are. Now the butterflies are inside of that text. Just kind of giving it a splash of color is kind of all I want to do. Still, still make it legible, right? But uh, just giving it a splash of color. And I could do that a couple times, maybe put some over here. Something like that. That's kind of the. That's kind of what I'm thinking. All right, uh, Lindsay. Um, cool. Uh, it will also auto select which layer you're on very handily unless you're in a group. Then I need to turn that off or get the whole group. So Sig, I don't know. So so when you talk about selecting, by the way, uh, right up here, if you need to select certain flowers, um, I'll hold down the Command key and it'll automatically turn to auto select. And then right over here, let me see if it's, oh yeah, auto select layer. Make sure that's set to layer and then the group won't get in the way. I don't know if that's the question you're asking, but that's actually what I use a lot. So I'll hold down the command key, click. Oh, it jumped right to that layer. Oh, thank you very much, Photoshop, for being so kind, because I want to bring you out like that. And I want to duplicate you, fun flowers over there and do that business. You guys get the idea. We're just having fun with this. And you can see kind of like the end result roughly. Here's another one, by the way, that I kind of made earlier as well. So here's 
here's kind of where my final ended up at. Just you can see it right like that. Uh, this butterfly is absolutely huge. It's huge. Uh, but I did, I did post this to uh, Instagram for those that are interested. And you can go ahead and say it looks like whatever. Ah, still has some issues. It's fine. Thank you so much for watching. Gosh, I'm down to my last minute. So what I typically do from there is export, quick export as a JPEG. Bam. Kick it out to my desktop, just like that. And what I typically do for Instagram when I post it there, if, if little Paul can move out of the way, excuse me, other version of me, uh, I'll do just airdrop to my phone as well. So, uh, but that's the short of it. Export it out, post it here. I've noticed some amazing work on Discord. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I really appreciate you. I think this has been a lot of fun so far, uh, just having amazing people here with me. So thank you so much. Stick around. Got some vector art coming up next. Thanks, everybody.